Hi everyone. Mayflower was an English ship that transported a group of English families, known today as the Pilgrims, from England to the New World in 1620. After a grueling ten weeks at sea, Mayflower, with 102 passengers and a crew of about 30, reached America, dropping anchor near the tip of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, on November 21, 1620. Differing from their contemporaries, the Puritans, who sought to reform and purify the Church of England, the Pilgrims chose to separate themselves from the Church of England because they believed it was beyond redemption due to its Roman Catholic past and the Church's resistance to reform, which forced them to pray in private. Starting in 1608, a group of English families left England for the Netherlands, where they could worship freely. By 1620, the community determined to cross the Atlantic for America, which they considered a new promised land, where they would establish Plymouth Colony. The Pilgrims had originally hoped to reach America by early October using two ships, but delays and complications meant they could use only one, Mayflower. Arriving in November, they had to survive unprepared through a harsh winter. As a result, only half of the original pilgrims survived the first winter at Plymouth. If not for the help of local indigenous peoples to teach them food gathering and other survival skills, all of the colonists might have perished. The following year, those 53 who survived, celebrated the colony's first fall harvest along with 90 Wampanoag Native American people, an occasion declared in centuries later the first American Thanksgiving. Before disembarking the Mayflower, the Pilgrims wrote and signed the Mayflower Compact, an agreement that established a rudimentary government, in which each member would contribute to the safety and welfare of the planned settlement. As one of the earliest colonial vessels, the ship has become a cultural icon in the history of the United States. Voyage. Leaving Holland. In explaining to his congregation why they should emigrate, Robinson used the analogy of the ancient Israelites leaving Babylon to escape bondage by returning to Jerusalem, where they would build their temple. The pilgrims and Puritans actually referred to themselves as God's new Israel, writes Peter Marshall. It was therefore considered the destiny of the pilgrims and Puritans to similarly build a spiritual Jerusalem in America. When it was time to leave, the ship's senior leader, Edward Winslow, described the scene of families being separated at the departure, a flood of tears was poured out. Those not sailing accompanied us to the ship but were not able to speak to one another for the abundance of sorrow before parting. The trip to the south coast of England took three days, where the ship took anchor at Southampton on August 5, 1620. From there, the pilgrims first laid eyes on their larger ship, Mayflower, as it was being loaded with provisions. Speedwell and Mayflower. Carrying about 65 passengers, Mayflower left London in mid July 1620. The ship then proceeded down the Thames to the south coast of England, where it anchored at Southampton, Hampshire. There she waited for the planned rendezvous on July 22 with the Speedwell, coming from Holland with members of the Leiden congregation. Although both ships planned to depart for America by the end of July, a leak was discovered on Speedwell, which had to be repaired. The ships set sail for America around August 5, but Speedwell sprang another leak shortly after, which necessitated the ship's return to Dartmouth for repairs. They made a new start after the repairs, but more than 200 miles beyond Land's End at the southwestern tip of England, Speedwell sprang a third leak. It was now early September, and they had no choice but to abandon Speedwell and make a determination on her passengers. This was a dire event, as vital funds had been wasted on the ship, which were considered very important to the future success of their settlement in America. Both ships returned to Plymouth, England, where 20 Speedwell passengers joined the now overcrowded Mayflower, while the others returned to Holland. They waited for seven more days until the wind picked up. William Bradford was especially worried, we lie here waiting for as fair a wind as can blow. Our victuals will be half eaten up, I think, before we go from the coast of England, and, if our voyage lasts long, we shall not have a month's victuals when we come in the country. According to Bradford, Speedwell was refitted and seaworthy, 
having made many voyages, to the great profit of her owners. He suggested that Speedwell's master may have used cunning and deceit to abort the voyage by causing the leaks, fearing starvation and death in America. The Trip Across the Atlantic The living quarters for the 102 passengers were cramped, with the living area about 80 feet by 20 feet and the ceiling about 5 feet high. With couples and children packed closely together for a trip lasting two months, a great deal of trust and confidence was required among everyone aboard. John Carver, one of the leaders on the ship, often inspired the pilgrims with a sense of earthly grandeur and divine purpose. He was later called the Moses of the Pilgrims, notes historian John Meacham. The pilgrims believed they had a covenant like the Jewish people of old, writes author Rebecca Fraser. The first half of the voyage proceeded over calm seas and under pleasant skies. Then the weather changed, with continuous northeasterly storms hurling themselves against the ship, and huge waves constantly crashing against the topside deck. In the midst of one storm, the servant of physician Samuel Fuller died and was buried at sea. A baby was also born, christened Okeanus Hopkins. During another storm, so fierce that the sails could not be used, the ship was forced to drift without hoisting its sails for days, or else risk losing her masts. The storm washed a male passenger, John Howland, overboard. He had sunk about twelve feet until a crew member threw out a rope, which Howland managed to grab, and he was safely pulled back on board. In mid-ocean, the ship came close to being totally disabled and may have had to return to England or risk sinking. A storm had so badly damaged its main beam that even the sailors despaired. By a stroke of luck, one of the colonists had a metal jack screw that he had purchased in Holland to help in the construction of the new settler homes. They used it to secure beam, which kept it from cracking further, thus maintaining the seaworthiness of the vessel. All told, despite the crowding, unsanitary conditions and seasicknesses, there was only one fatality during the voyage. The ship's cargo included many stores that supplied the pilgrims with the essentials needed for their journey and future lives. It is assumed that they carried tools, food and weapons, as well as some live animals, including dogs, sheep, goats, and poultry. The ship also held two small 21-foot boats powered by oars or sails. There were also artillery pieces aboard, which they might need to defend themselves against enemy European forces or indigenous tribes. On November 19, 1620, they sighted present-day Cape Cod. They spent several days trying to sail south to their planned destination of the colony of Virginia, where they had obtained permission to settle from the company of merchant adventurers. But the strong winter seas forced them to return to the harbor at Cape Cod Hook, known today as Provincetown Harbor, and they set anchor on November 21. It was before setting anchor that the male pilgrims and non-pilgrim passengers drew up and signed the Mayflower Compact. Among the resolutions in the compact were those establishing legal order and meant to quell increasing strife within the ranks. Miles Standish was selected to make sure the rules were obeyed, as there was a consensus that discipline would need to be enforced to ensure the survival of the planned colony. Once they agreed to settle and build a self-governing community, they came ashore. The moment the pilgrims stepped ashore was described by William Bradford, the second governor of the Plymouth colony. Being thus arrived in a good harbour and brought safe to land, they fell upon their knees and blessed the God of heaven, who had brought them over the vast and furious ocean, and delivered them from all the perils and miseries thereof, again to set their feet on the firm and stable earth, their proper element. On Monday December 7, an exploring expedition was launched under the direction of Captain Christopher Jones to search for a suitable settlement site. There were 34 persons in the open small boat, 24 passengers and 10 sailors. They were ill-prepared for the bitter winter weather which they encountered on their reconnoiter, as the pilgrims were not accustomed to winter weather which was much colder than back home. They were forced to spend the night ashore due to the bad weather they encountered, ill-clad in below freezing temperatures with wet shoes and stockings that froze overnight. 
Plymouth faced many difficulties during its first winter, the most notable being the risk of starvation and the lack of suitable shelter. The Pilgrims had no way of knowing that the ground would be frozen by the middle of November, making it impossible to do any planting. Nor were they prepared for the snowstorms that would make the countryside impassable without snowshoes. And in their haste to leave, they did not think to bring any fishing rods. From the beginning, the assistance they received from the local Native Americans was vital. Thanks for watching.